talking about California, looking at California today. Let's talk about California on Tune Mercedes, all right? So um, recently, they just put out a uh, part of their emissions, which looks at the ECU. So they pull the ECU data off of the um, off of your, you know, ECU through the OBD2. And what they do is um, they do a checksum and make sure that that software is the same as other cars they've seen in the past um, with, you know, the same engines and whatever, you know. Um, I think they're partnering with uh, manufacturers and what have you to get data, but right now I do not think all the manufacturers supply them ECU updates as they come along. So in theory, the idea is we'll test the ECU, make sure that there's no small gain that's been defeated on the tune, like maybe EGR delete or something, you know, something that would maybe make the engine run longer, um, but potentially cause, I don't know, more nitrous oxide or, or whatever they're trying to, you know, emission. Uh, control. But um, there are some issues here, right? One is that it is theoretically possible and potentially even likely that a smaller, you know, manufacturer like maybe a McLaren who uses a Mercedes engine, um, who may do their own tunes, or, you know, maybe Mercedes done some of the custom tunes for them or something like that. Who, who knows? But like, there's a possibility that a manufacturer might update their tune or their ECU because you know their their configurations are stored on there, and it would actually flag back a different checksum than what California is expecting. So, I would imagine that there's going to be false positives uh, with this system. They're not going through and checking every single like uh, you know table. I mean, th they don't have the experience. Uh, like I've spent like the last, I don't know, six or eight months uh, really digging in and spending like an hour or two a day testing and che checking out what each table meant and whatever on the forums and go up garage and everything. Um, and like, you know, I, I'm, I, it, there's a lot of things I don't know, right? Um, about what each table means. Like there's so many tables there's different fueling tables. Like there's there's tables that I'm not sure any one person would know what every single table is. I mean, we're like, you know, we're not landing on Mars, but there are so many different tables in the modern ECU that it would be very difficult for any person making, you know, like any person in that capacity to know everything. Like there, there is just no way they could hire people to look through it. Even with AI, I don't think they could figure that out because, I mean, it's just not feasible at this point. Like theoretically, we're like here, and AI like is like here, right? So they're just looking at checksums. All right. So what this means is, if you change your bootloader, um, it might flag you. So with a my genius, in theory, you could probably go back and forth. And I'm not suggesting you do this. A hundred percent, I'm not suggesting you do this. But let's say you have a race car that you race legally. Um, sometimes you might want to, um, like, I don't know, race it, and then you drive it on the street, right? So you flash back and forth. You know, let's just give it that. Or maybe it's a show car. Well, who who knows, right? But it's an off-use car, right? You're not using it on California highways. I'm not recommending anyone break the law 100%. All right, but what I'm going to say is there's a couple ways that you might want to or have to go deal with this. Um, so one is like, you know, you get a, an official tune and it's it fails because, you know, California isn't caught up. In that case, you'd have to go and ask the manufacturer to update the California whatever. The other way to do this is um, to do this would be to have two different ECUs. And <clears throat> I like this method a lot, to be honest, because it's a good method. Like if one breaks or bricks or whatever, you have another one. So you get a, a, like you find the ECU that goes to your car and you actually look at the number on your box. 
um, reach out to someone like Eurocharged and uh, Jake will do this. They can virginize the ECU, uh, the new one, and then copy it over. And then you'll have one that might be tuned and one that's not tuned. Uh, and then, you know, you'll be able to have an extra ECU in case one breaks. I think the My Genius might get around this. Uh, you know, again, if you're racing, you know, not telling anyone to break the law. Um, and basically, I think that might get around this. Some things that might not would be like, I'm not sure HP tuners would get around it, even if you flash back to stock. So what I'm saying, like um, HP tuners would may not is because it how it unlocks uh, most cars or at least Mercedes as far as I know, I believe it would change the checksum, um, and you know you can kind of check this out by unlocking with HP tuners and then trying to use like uh, my genius on it, it it'll flag it as like we we won't we won't flash this it's not stock. Um, so that's something you should know. Uh, all right, so those are some reasons, some potential downfalls. You know, the reasons why they're doing it is that there are some things you can change uh, that might on the you know file that might actually affect um, how good or bad your emissions would be. Um, some of those things are debatable whether they're long term helpful, like. Uh, EGR might actually cause more issues down the line <laughs> than it like fixes, you know, um, and you know, trashing cars and building new cars is good for the economy, but it's probably bad for the environment when you think about it. But I don't know. Let me know what you think down below because I, I can see both sides of that issue, right? The emissions might be better in a new car, especially like an EV, right? But the actual like uh, environmental tax to build that car, something like an EV, could be quite high. So I would imagine that there's some sort of like a graph and somewhere around, I don't know, maybe 150 or 250,000 miles for most people, I would guess it, it would probably be like the maximization of area under the curve when you consider the processes to build, deliver, and uh, you know whatever the new car versus the emissions of each car, um, because the, you know again there's an environmental tax to build this car, um, and you know the new cars may not last as long. We we really don't know, but I, I would suspect they probably won't because there's so much pressure uh, for emissions control, and you know reliability has taken a backseat to you know, power and emissions. Uh, it's just, you know, the third wheel now. And I would guess the height of reliability in terms of vehicles, at least for the next 20 years or so, will probably be like the 2000 to like the 2000, like 10 to 2014, you know, maybe models. Um, something like a 2GRFE, I think it's going to be probably one of the pinnacles of reliability. You know, I, I, I don't think Toyota is going to be able to make an engine that reliable again uh, with all the pressures for emissions, uh, for example. Um, and I think it'll take some time for the electric vehicles to be as long-term reliable and durable. Um, you know, maybe when we get solid-state batteries and we, we've gone through like 10 generations or 5 generations, we'll see very reliable uh, EVs, I, I think it's possible for sure, uh, based on how they, they work. They should be able to be made reliable, but right now, I would guess it's going to be an issue. Um, and uh, I'm not saying EVs aren't cool, Teslas are cool. I, I appreciate that. I've spoken about that before. Um, but back to the topic, all right. Uh, some of the downsides to this uh, would be that some vehicles might be flagged falsely, uh, you know, based on manufacturer updates, because it's not like California has a direct API to like McLaren or Mercedes or uh, they, you know, maybe they do to Ford and GM. I'm not a hundred percent, but I would imagine that Mercedes, when they update 
their uh, engines, you know, when they do incremental updates, they may not have any requirement to send it to California, and they may not send it to California. Maybe Porsche not either. Um, and these are things that um, they do update over time. You know, uh, they might add a little bit more fuel because they might run too hot in the beginning or maybe they see something else. Um, right now, TCU tunes, I don't think, are going to be checked. Uh, it's a different controller. It, it should be fine. But in theory, like, if you change anything, it'll flag it. Um, and we kind of went over ways to get around that if you're racing or it's like a show car exemption. Um, you know, a, a clone DCU is probably the best way. Uh, Eurocharge, please reach out to, you know, Jake at Eurocharge.com. He can hook you up with that. You'll have to send the ECU to them. Uh, they'll send it back to you in like three days. Um, I mean, you'll, it'll be back at your door in three days. And the, the price is pretty reasonable. And you'd find the, you know, clone DCU on like eBay, you know, the, the core. You'd send them your ECU plus that, you know, label which one's which. Uh, make sure the numbers match, and, and they'll hook it up. All right, guys, so, uh, you know, I hope you appreciate this uh, overview about, you know, California. You know, it is checksum matching. It's based on what they've seen in the past. Um, and as far as I know, there will probably be some growing pains in terms of, uh, I don't know if it's pains or pangs, whatever. But there'll be some issues with, you know, I would guess updates and, potentially California not uh, anticipating updates on certain ECUs. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I guess it's possible that they're just saying this now and then they're going to implement it later. I, I guess that's possible. Um, but I, I think they're probably going to try and they're probably going to check checksums and see if they, uh, you know, are, are what they expect and maybe fail some people. All right, guys, till next time.